in a fucking student, nigga. You already know the fucking vibes. No cap. Booze in my pocket, thought to say I'm getting sick. I'm dripping in his island, now they stick I'm hitting licks. Boy, I bust up. They found a plan to make you rich. Middle finger up, boy, I hate it. What's this one? Dr. Fairly Slab's lover blames it on wheat. Bro, first of all, <laughs> the Zy ain't going to do you like that. The Zy ain't never, maybe the crack, maybe the that horse shit, you know what I'm saying? H might, you know what I'm saying? That K-12, that Fetty, that shit might do that to you. But the za unless it's lace, ain't going to do that to you. That's He said, blame it on us. In the early morning hours of Memorial Day in 2018, the tranquil atmosphere of the affluent city of Thousand Oaks, California, was shattered by an incident that defied comprehension. According to witnesses, it was a startling display of unimaginable violence, a chilling testament to the depths of human brutality. Local law enforcement rushed to the scene in response to frantic calls, unsure of what awaited them. What they encountered was pure bedlam. A frenzied assailant, surrounded by a sea of blood, inflicted savage injuries not only on a fellow human being, but on the very concept of order and decency. Oh my gosh. The he officers really who arrived were left reeling, struggling to believe their own eyes. In their desperate attempts to subdue the aggressor, Deputies resorted to various methods, only to be met with failure again and again. It was as if they had stumbled upon a malevolent force, even leading some officers to entertain the notion of demonic possession. Defense attorneys and medical experts had a name for it, a cannabis-induced psychotic episode. What the fuck? That's actually a thing? That's actually a thing. You can have a psychotic episode Law off of cannabis. Enforcement eventually brought this terrifying situation under control, but the nightmare of that fateful Memorial Day lingered. In the years that followed, the victim's family members would be forced to grapple with courtroom delays and legal decisions that defied their expectations. In this video, we will report. <laughs> Shit, let me put the za down. That is crazy. on the facts of the crime, court proceedings, and its outcome. With that said, let's dive into the haunting story of Dr. Bryn Spacer and her controversial defense. The weed made me do it. Hey, yo, we back like we never left. I got an ambition to suck my dick. Oh, we back like we never left. I told her I suck it until she can't breathe. What? I'm doing my dance. I told her I need me. I'm doing my dance. I'm doing my dance. I'm doing my dance. I'm doing my A word to the viewer. Addressing the question of whether marijuana can cause a psychotic episode falls mm -hmm. outside the scope of this channel. This topic has been the subject of numerous medical studies. The DSM-5, a key diagnostic tool in psychiatry, acknowledges cannabis-induced psychotic disorder as part of the schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders category. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there are staunch anti-cannabis groups that circulate materials that could only be characterized as propaganda aimed at demonizing cannabis. Given the complexity and the varied perspectives on this issue, it is best left to experts in the field to provide clarity and insights. Very short. You know what? Let's look that up, bro. Because I'm curious about that. Fuck. I can't type today. I think that's what they call it. I don't 
Why is that the first thing that popped up? Relax. Let's look at let's look into this. Let's see. Dot gov website, so it should be reliable. Okay, cannabis and psychos. Super okay. Firm. Okay, blah blah blah. Oh, I just want to know the conclusion. Like, give me shade to the bitch. Hold on. Reference as that pass it the discussion. I think it's in the discussion here. I guess you, bro, it don't make no sense, bro. Okay. So it's little to no evidence. So basically, that was a bunch of bullshit, y'all. I didn't feel like reading all that, but that apparently that was a bunch of bullshit. Six out of 21 South St. Paul. It's like they need more progress. RP versus her husband has been smoking marijuana. They do keep a handgun in the house, but it's not in anybody's possession. Who's the note? You grabbed the gun. She's screaming. The line disconnected. They step up cover. Yeah. 35. 3 Adam, I'm her. Oh, it's that way. 25. 62 Adam, not too far. 33 Adam. 33 Baker. Need ambulance. Coach Sam's reporting down. Possible GSA to head. We got need homicide. This shit must have been real bad. In 2014, 50-year-old Colorado man Richard Kirk pleaded guilty to second-degree murder after shooting his wife in the head at the couple's home in Denver. Kirk was initially charged with first-degree murder, but this charge was downgraded after his attorneys argued that a marijuana edible, which Kirk was consuming for back pain, had severely impaired his judgment. They contended he had suffered involuntary intoxication because he did not know he was at high risk for marijuana psychosis based on... Damn. No, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Them edibles, bro. I'm cool off them jaws, bro. Them shits really do fuck you up, bro. I ain't... Little short story time. I I took this little chocolate jaw, bro, and I was geek so bad, bro, that... That I, bro, Shania pulled over to let someone drive, bro. And I, I didn't know what was going on. So I hopped off the car talking about, so what's going on? What's going on? I was cooked, bro. And I was scared. I was so, bro. I'm, I'm cool off the eddies, bro. That shit not cool. That shit not cool, man. on a family history of schizophrenia. Kirk entered a guilty plea for one charge of second-degree murder, thus avoiding a trial where his defense of involuntary intoxication would have been tested. However, this particular defense strategy would eventually resurface in a courtroom in the case of California versus Bryn Spacer. Twenty-six-year-old Chad Omelia was widely regarded by those who knew him best as a kind, considerate, and outgoing individual. Sorry, a sir. Santa Clara native, he attended Hart High School and excelled at football there. He graduated from Chico State University and worked at an accounting firm in Camarillo 
while studying to be a CPA. Most of all, he loved his family and his German shepherd named Athena. He shared That's a three-bedroom condominium on Megan Place just off Thousand Oaks Boulevard with two roommates. Sometime between late April and early May 2018, Chad had a chance encounter at a dog park with 27-year-old Bryn. Damn, that's crazy. Imagine if he didn't go to the dog park that day. And he just was like, fuck it, I'm going to stay home. He would have never met Shorty, and he'd still probably be a... That's just, like, crazy way to think about. Spacer. They hung out several times and had what was described by friends as a harmonious relationship. Spacer would later state, I thought he was very funny. He was really nice to me. We were always sarcastic with each other. He ended up being a really nice, funny person when I got to know him. In the few weeks they had known each other, there was no indication of any troubles at all. Originally from Illinois, Bryn Spacer was born to Mike and Laurie Spacer in January 1991. Her childhood was marked by medical challenges, including a diagnosis of hearing loss at the age of three which yeah. nearly led to complete deafness. In a video shared on the Facebook page of Washington University School of Medicine, Spacer opened up about her experiences, saying, It was difficult to try and be normal because I didn't want to be the only one with hearing loss. It was really hard for me to advocate for myself and be open about having hearing loss. I was very involved in sports and music and trying to get good grades and classes. I wanted to blend in with everybody else. Spacer's early struggles with hearing loss profoundly influenced her career path, leading her to devote her life to helping others with similar conditions. Mm -hmm. Despite her own hearing impairments and the need for hearing aids, she achieved remarkable academic success, earning a doctorate in audiology from the prestigious Washington University School. Okay. So she a doctor. She was making doctor money. Okay. Say sure. School of Medicine in St. Louis in 2017. Recognized for her exceptional promise and academic prowess, Spacer was awarded the Max E. Goldstein Award. As a member of both the American Academy of Audiology and the American Speech-Language Hearing Association, her expertise spans a range of areas, including adult and pediatric diagnostics, auditory brainstem response testing, and the application of hearing aids and cochlear implants. Okay. After earning her doctorate in audiology in 2017, she relocated to Thousand Oaks and began her career at the House Children's Hearing Center of UCLA in Los Angeles. According to a former classmate, Bless me. Spacer did not do illicit drugs and was not a habitual marijuana user. Spacer had no prior criminal history and no record of violence. On the evening of May 27, 2018, Spacer was out with friends in Santa Barbara where she consumed a small amount of alcohol. She was later invited to Chad's place to watch a movie. Spacer arrived at Chad's condo sometime between 10 to 10.30 p.m. that evening, bringing along her Siberian husky, Aria. Chad's two male roommates were also present, each engaged in their own activities within their rooms. The stage was set for what appeared to be a tranquil Sunday evening, a potential spark for romance between two young individuals. However, sure? beneath this veneer of normalcy, tension was brewing poised to transform the night into something far removed from a typical romantic rendezvous. Keep that, whatever that shit is, keep that away from me. That Mary Jane don't need to be that strong. That shit that, she said, this is that Mary J. Blige. This shit finna get you just feeling just fine, 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 fine. That's what I would say. They need to make a strand called Mary J. Blige, and that's the punchline. This thing gonna have you feeling just fine, 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 fine. Feel me? I need to chill. In the early morning hours of Monday, May 28th, residents of the Casa de Oaks condominium complex on Megan Place reported hearing a loud altercation followed by screams coming from an apartment occupied by three male roommates screaming and enough that you could hear it what, four buildings over and then it kind of like stopped a little bit and then I heard it go on and then I heard woman, you know, a woman screaming and then this and then I started hearing blood curling screams. Shortly after 1 a.m. deputies received a report of a disturbance. Arriving at the condo by approximately 1 a.m. they were met with a scene of turmoil. 
There, they discovered a wounded service dog, Chad, lying in a pool of his own blood, yeah. and Spacer, bloodstained as well, kneeling beside him and screaming hysterically. In her hand, she clutched an eight-inch long serrated knife. Despite officers' orders to drop the knife, Spacer did not comply. Instead, she responded with an expletive and then alarmingly turned the knife towards herself. Oh, no. Recounting the incident, one officer noted, I saw her plunge the knife into her neck. Oh my God. Published reports indicate that the police first attempted to subdue Spacer using a tape. Bro, that shit had to be mixed with something, bro. Like a small amount of something. Because no way, bro. The Mary J. Like that? God damn. Taser. But to their surprise, it was ineffective. Even a second deployment of the taser failed to stop her. The, the police fuck? then resorted to using a retractable steel baton. She had the super serum soldier, the super soldier serum, bro. Niggas tased her twice. On. The, the initial baton? strike was also unsuccessful in disarming Yo, her. what the fuck? Persisting, the officers continued to use the baton, delivering a total of nine blows before they could finally disarm her. Damn, she, However, she by this time, Spacer had already inflicted a staggering 108 stab wounds on Chad as confirmed by the Ventura County Medical Examiner's oh Office. God. Additionally, the baton strikes resulted in a fractured left wrist and hand for Spacer. After she was detained, one of the officers on the scene observed that Chad was not breathing. He was soon declared deceased at the location. Approximately yeah. five minutes later, an ambulance arrived and Spacer was taken to Los Robles Regional Medical Center. In the wake of this shocking event, Neighbors were left in a state of profound disbelief and distress, struggling to come to terms with the realization that such a horrifying incident had occurred. Yo, that's insane, bro. 108 times, bro. He probably was gone by the fifth or sixth stab, bro. That's heard in their immediate the vicinity. Fuck? I want to know why. The county sheriffs arrived. One man was dead and one female had to be rushed to the hospital. Deputies won't confirm how the man died or what the motive for his killing was, stopping short of calling this a murder and attempted suicide. We don't believe there are any outstanding suspects at this point. Uh, so whatever it was was confined to the in, inside the uh, residence is what our theory is at this point. The incident happened inside one of those apartments just behind me at the Casa de Oaks apartment. <laughs> she hit the happen in one of these outside apartments behind me. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a little enlightened myself. Apartment complex here in Thousand Oaks where investigators are trying to find witnesses and collect as much evidence as possible. In the hospital before her surgery, Spacer was interviewed by an officer. According to the officer's report, Spacer did not know what happened and did not know how she sustained her injuries. Oh, fuck. Spacer asked me where Chad was currently. Spacer denied she consumed alcohol or drugs. Spacer asked me where she was at one point during the interview, the officer noted. Three Bro, days if she real life don't remember, that's insane. Later, while still hospitalized, she was questioned by a detective. As per a report posted on the Thousand Oaks Acorn website, dated May 9, 2019, and authored by Becca Whitnall, Sergeant Stephen Jenkins testified to Spacer's account of what transpired on the 28th. Apparently, at some point in the early hours, Chad stepped out of the condo to smoke marijuana, and at that point, she told him she'd like to try it as well. After smoking and feeling no effects, she claims Chad said, I'll give you something stronger. He allegedly refilled the bong, and Spacer told the detective they both took a second hit of marijuana. Spacer recounted experiencing a severe adverse reaction immediately after the second hit. She reported feeling as if she couldn't breathe and believed she was on the brink of death. She also noted feeling angry when she realized that she was high, while Chad seemed unaffected. Spacer detailed a hallucination in which she perceived herself as dead. What convinced the fuck? That what the fuck he had smoke and then he said i'm gonna give you something stronger and hit her with the fucking goku super god ultra this hallucination was reality she believed injuring chad was necessary in order to resurrect herself this belief led her to attack both him and her dog sergeant jenkins recounted her mentioning the voices encouraged her to keep fighting keep doing what you're doing upon the arrival of deputies 
These perceived voices urged her to inflict harm on herself. After a four-night stay in the hospital, Spacer was released and immediately arrested on site. Her bail was set at $510,000. Her first court appearance was scheduled for June 4th. Upon successfully posting bail on June 7th, Spacer was released from custody and remained free while awaiting trial. She was initially charged with first-degree murder and one count of animal abuse. I don't think it's first-degree, though. During their investigation, detectives learned Chad's two roommates were witnesses to the chaotic and violent event, but did not physically intervene. The they fuck? felt the best chance to save Chad was to contact the police as quickly as possible. And that police described the roommates as fully cooperative. Forensic analysis of Spacer's blood, as confirmed by the sheriff's crime lab, revealed the presence of THC and no illicit substances. Okay. Further examination of the remnants of burned plant material in Chad's bong and five grams of marijuana seized from his apartment showed no substances other than THC. Damn, so was he, bro, if this, bro, what the fuck? The marijuana found in the condo, sourced from an unlicensed delivery service, had a THC concentration of 4%, significantly lower than the levels typically found in cannabis sold at legal dispensaries, where okay. THC content often exceeds 20%, and more potent strains are available. Blood tests were also conducted on Chad, which likewise identified THC as the only psychoactive compound present. On June 22, 2018, three weeks after Spacer's arrest, the Speech Language Pathology and Audiology and Hearing Aid Dispensers Board of California filed a request via the State Attorney General's Office to suspend Spacer's license to practice. Oh, sure. Spacer appeared in court on July 12th to defend her license, but a Ventura County Superior Court judge ruled she would not be allowed to practice in the time before her criminal trial. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it was any malice, bro. She was the baffling case shit. of Bryn Spacer and Chad Omelia, laden with unresolved issues and shocking violence, had left the community seeking answers. While Chad's family awaited justice, Spacer's family asserted her wrongful accusation. Following a lengthy five-year period filled with legal postponements due to defense tactics, the trial was finally scheduled to begin in October 2023. Okay. This pivotal moment promised to provide answers to the pressing question. Did Bren Spacer experience a cannabis-induced psychotic episode? Or was she conscious of her actions during the fatal stabbing of Chad Omelia? As the trial approached, it became apparent that there were still unexpected developments yet to unfold. At a court hearing on September 27, 2023, to the great surprise of the Amelia family, Spacer's charges were reduced from murder to involuntary manslaughter by Ventura County prosecutors. This decision came after their medical expert agreed with the defense's medical expert on her mental state. While second-degree murder could have led to a life sentence, manslaughter generally carries a maximum of four years in prison. What? The decision came less than a month before the scheduled... Wait, manslaughter? Well, well, first of all, what is manslaughter technically? Because I want to make sure I'm not tripping. The crime of killing him without malice, afterthought, or otherwise in circumstances, not at all. Okay, so basically, it's just you kill but you didn't have any, like, ill intentions behind it. Jury trial. As the judge ruled on the motion and Spacer entered a not guilty plea, cries could be heard from the gallery where Chad's friends and family sat. A defiant Sean Omelia, Chad's father, I know that shit hurt. She was aware of what she was doing when she viciously and prematurely ended my son's life. I'm here because on the 14th of this month, our family was completely ambushed by the Ventura County DA's office. Five and a half years later, they wanted to try this case for involuntary manslaughter. There was an eyewitness to the crime. Well, the roommate, Chad cried out to him and he said, Vinny, he goes, I need you to call the police. I've been stabbed and get out of the condominium. So, you know, he's getting stabbed and he's worried about his roommate, get out of here, you know? She was in some form of hallucination. But if you go through, you know, the different types of consciousness, that's one of them. She was not unconscious. 
She knew what she was doing, and she was actually making choices. She acted with intent to kill somebody, in line with what the original DA, Greg Toten of Ventura County, filed his charges for. It's also in line with what the original deputy DA, Catherine Volker, discussed with our family and expressed to our family. We as a family feel like we're completely ambushed by these people. You know, That's I mean, crazy. I've never seen a group of people try to fight the opposition's fight as much as they did. We're in a place now that Audrey Nofsinger, the deputy DA that's handling the case, she's going to, by, by the action that she's taking, she's actually acquitting her of second-degree murder with no trial. Every time we've gone to court, they've asked for a continuance. Every time. Every time. We want 60 more days, 60 more days, 60 more days. If, if you just do the simple math on it, Divide five and a half years by 60 days, it'll tell you how many continuances they've asked for. Let the people of Ventura County hear the evidence and make a decision, you know? Sure. And at least at that point, they're giving Chad a chance, they're giving our family a chance, they're giving his friends a chance, and, you know, the community, the people here in the community that, that actually know him. Now, right? this, I ain't gonna lie, this shit is sad, bro, but it's like, Technically, she didn't mean it, but it's like both sides. Like, she probably feels terrible, bro. Now they're not giving us a chance. Just prosecute the crime for what it is. It's a murder. The state's medical expert, Dr. Chris Mohandy, testified that Spacer's marijuana use that night triggered a psychotic episode that led her to kill. Because of her use of cannabis, she was having delusions and hallucinations. She lost touch with reality, said Dr. Mohandy. The defense's medical expert, Dr. William Wershing, said he is essentially 100% confident in his diagnosis of Spacer as suffering from cannabis-induced psychosis. I don't think I can be 100% certain about anything, but this is as certain as I can be about anything. Ultimately, sure. according to the prosecutor, based on the fact that... My man says, yeah, damn... So they both kind of saying the same thing, right? And both sides' expert witnesses came to the same conclusion. Oh, shit. The evidence no longer supported a charge of murder in that the evidence establishes that the defendant acted with criminal negligence but not with malice in killing the victim. In their opening statements, attorneys for both the defense and prosecution agreed on most of the facts of the case. Therefore, the main question for the jury to decide would be whether Spacer met the legal definition of involuntary intoxication. According to the prosecution, Spacer's intoxication was voluntary because she chose to smoke from the bong that was offered to her. Senior Prosecutor Audrey Nafziger contended, The law says when someone voluntarily ingests an intoxicant and bad things happen, like a DUI, the person responsible is the person who voluntarily ingests. I get that. But then it's also like he gave her some strong shit without knowing her tolerance. So it's like, you don't know a person's tolerance. You shouldn't really be giving them strong shit. That's just my opinion. and does the bad thing. We don't get to blame other people when we do something bad because we wanted to get high. Defense attorney Robert Schwartz responded that his client did not actually want to get high. He conceded Chad did not intend for her to have such an extreme reaction, but the evidence will show he knew what the potentially devastating effects could be to a novice user, and he didn't tell her that. Facts. Like, Schwartz that's what I'm was saying. alluding to the testimony. Like, if you're going to have someone smoke anything or be like, oh, try this mushroom or anything that's going to cause you to hallucinate or feel some types of, like, high, you need to be like, hey, this may, you know what I'm saying? Good way to nice. One of Chad's roommates, who had also had a negative experience with marijuana smoked from Chad's bong. This roommate recounted that approximately two months prior to the stabbing incident, he experienced a distressing reaction the first time he smoked marijuana with Chad and Yo, Chad had that shit, bro. If if it that's a I ain't gonna lie, that's another reason to add to, like, not first degree murder. If someone else had a bad, maybe not on that still, but still saying, like, they had a bad reaction, we have to take that into account. And another friend. Sure. He described his experience, saying, 
I started to see the walls and people's faces moving like the ocean, and I felt my heart beating really fast. I told him I felt like I was dying. He noted that these symptoms eventually subsided without intervention. Spacer chose to testify in her defense and was the last witness called by her attorneys. She claimed that on the night of May 27, 2018, Chad had asked her to go to his apartment. The pair initially watched TV and talked a little. Just after midnight, he asked her whether she would like to try marijuana using his bong. Chad is said to have been a habitual cannabis user, smoking or using a bong on most days. Spacer took a few puffs but told Chad she didn't feel anything. This allegedly led him to respond with a promise of getting something more intense. The court heard that moments after her second hit from the bong, Spacer grabbed three knives from a kitchen block and hurled them at Chad before stabbing him on every part of his body, Damn. leaving fatal wounds on his heart, lungs, and neck. While Spacer initially told officers she asked to smoke, her lawyer refuted that notion. Attorney Schwartz stated that, in fact, Chad pressured her and insisted that she inhale from the bong. Before that night, she had no history of mental illness and no way of knowing that smoking pot would trigger a psychotic episode. Nice. After a thorough review of all of the evidence, listening to witness accounts, considering expert testimony, and weighing the closing arguments, the jury withdrew to their chamber for deliberation. This pivotal moment marked the culmination of a long and complex trial, with the jurors now tasked with reaching a verdict that could finally bring a resolution to this intense and emotionally charged case. Oh, the verdict. What's your predicts? I feel like they let her off with manslaughter. Come on, predicts right now. Put your predicts in. On Friday, December 1st, 2023, after less than four hours of deliberation, a Ventura County Superior Court jury found Bryn Spacer guilty of involuntary manslaughter for the 2018 killing of Chad Omelia. This verdict represented a mutual agreement between the prosecution and defense that Spacer's conduct was the result of a cannabis-induced psychotic episode. Following the verdict, the prosecution submitted a... Mo like, you literally, you literally couldn't... Um... You literally couldn't make do anything other than be like, because if both doctors are saying like this is definitely a psychotic episode because of a cannabis induced psychotic episode, bro, you literally can't fight it. Motion for Spacer's immediate they're, incarceration. They're like experts said the same thing as the fucking defense expert. So, however, this motion was overruled by the Honorable Judge Anthony Sabo of the Ventura County Superior Court. As a result, Spacer was permitted to depart from the court with her counsel and family, pending her sentencing hearing scheduled for January 23rd, 2020. Oh, shit. It, it's, it's happened. Four. A separate hearing addressing the charged special allegations and sentence enhancements convened on December 4th. The jury affirmed the special allegation of serious felony against Spacer, along with the sentence enhancements for a crime involving great violence and armed with and use of a weapon. These additional charges could slightly lengthen her prison term. Okay. What is your take on this case? Do you believe the jury got it right? I mean, I do think the jury got it right. It's just sad to see, like, the, all the evidence points to, like, this was an episode. Now, if it actually... Crazy, but, like... All As usual, feel free to that. share your thoughts below. I want to see the comments to this video. And then I also want to look up some stuff from this. Okay, so cannabis is on. Okay, really. So it says who have a biologic ge genetic towards schizophrenia. Yeah, that's
That's crazy. That scares the fuck out of me. But it should be an update on this case, right? What's her fucking name? I don't even remember Shorty's name. Is it in the description below? I want to see how I want to see how much she got sentenced for. That's what I want to see. God damn, they didn't copy me. I want to see how much she got sentenced for, chat. Uh, so let's get let's get the tea. Prosecutors are even blah blah blah. Okay, okay, we pretty much know all that. It's the sentences. Let's see. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, I don't get it, bro. Where's their sentences? Like, she got probation? Oh, she only got two years of probation is crazy. Yo, I'm not going to lie, bro. If I was her family, bro, I would be like, I, I would, if I was the bull family, bro, I would be tight. But like, I like, it's, it's, it's like one of those like things where like, you understand it, but it just feels so bad. Like, I understand why she only got probation. If anything, honestly, I feel like she should have been forced to go to some type of therapy. If you're going to put on probation, also make it part of her thing um, to have to go to therapy. She even she even served no time. I'm honestly Joe Tom would have even served her right. I feel like she should have went to some type of mental institution or something, but God damn, she actually got off, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. I can't believe I thought she was gonna get some type of jail time. She got none. She got probation for two years. 2025, bro, she's off of probation. What 2025 in January off of probation, bro? I mean, not 2025. I keep thinking we're in 2023. 2026 probably would be when she gets off because she just got sentenced. That's crazy. Also. I'm just reading through this shit.
I just feel as though, like, she should have got something, bro, other than getting off. I mean, it's not even like she getting off because she only, she didn't even remember what fucking happened, bro. It's just a fucked up, like, situation, bro. But, all right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the murder mystery reactions. We're going to be back for longer streams and more streams. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the post. Smelly. I love you, boys and girls, because we're not sexist. And I'll see y'all, boys, in the next.